All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Athenian Stranger tutorial video, where today we're going to look at the homework problems for Unit 2, Lesson 8. This is the unit on finding the equation of a line from tables and descriptions. And the assumption is that you have already watched the video and done the lesson and that you have already done this homework. Um, the goal here is not to give you all the answers so you get a hundred. The goal is to explain how to do these problems so you don't get mired in a small misunderstanding and have that interrupt your whole progress through the, the homework problems. So, let's look at number one. We're given a table, we're asked to find an equation. And this is one of those situations where none of the values give us the y-intercept. So, we don't know the slope, we don't know the y-intercept. We have to find both. The first step is to compute the change in x and the change in y. So we compute the change in x and we compute the change in y. Remember this little triangle means delta in Greek and in mathematics we read this change in x and change in y. What's happening between negative 6 and 6 is it is plus 12. Between 6 and 18, it is plus 12. Between 18 and 24, that is plus 6. Okay, on the y side, between negative 9 and 1, that is plus 10. Between 1 and 11, that's plus 10. And between 11 and 16, that's plus 5. And now we need to compute the ratio of change. Okay, this gives us the rate of change here. So M equals the change in Y over the change in X. And what we want, we want these ratios to be the same, otherwise we don't have a linear equation. So 10 twelfths can be reduced to 5 sixth. 10 over 12 is 5 over 6. Here, 10 twelfths can be reduced to 5 over 6. And now 5 over 6 is irreducibly 5 over 6. These are all the same. So the slope m is 5 over 6. Now to compute the equation of the line or calculate it, we have to choose a coordinate pair from this table. Just one. And you pick one at random. I mean, not entirely at random. What you're looking for is a coordinate pair that you think would be easy to work with mathematically. So the thinking is you wouldn't want to choose 24 and 16 because those are bigger numbers, harder to work with. But you could choose any pair of points to plug in, and they would all work. They would all give you the same equation. So we now write the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m 
open parentheses, x minus x1, close parentheses. And the next step is to go through and plug in x1, y1. Now, before we do that, we should write down what m is. m equals 5 sixth, 5 over 6. And our point that we're going to use is 6 comma 1. OK? So let's write in our equation here, y minus Oh, we didn't label our points. X1, Y1. All right. So we plug in Y1 here. Y minus 1 equals M is 5 sixth. Open parentheses. X minus X1, which is 6. Now I need to distribute 5 sixth. So I rewrite the left side, y minus 1, equals 5 sixth x minus 5. Five over six times negative six. Okay, that would be five times negative six over six, we can cancel the sixes, so that's why it's minus five. Now I add one to both sides. And I get y equals five sixth x plus four. And that's the equation. Now, number two. Look at number two. Start to think about what you need to do there. So in number two, we have the same situation we had in number one. We don't know, we don't know what the slope is. We don't know what the y-intercept uh, it, well, we certainly don't know what the y-intercept is. We don't know what the slope is. So we have to calculate everything from scratch. Remember, the process is going to be identical for every time you get a table like this. We're going to compute the change in x. And we're going to compute the change in y. And then we'll calculate that ratio of change, change in y over change in x. So we draw our alligators here. Now what's happening between on the x side between negative 9 and, and negative 4? It's going up by plus 5. Between negative 4 and negative 1, it's going up by 3. Between negative 1 and positive 2, it's going up by 3. On the y side, between 19 and 4, it's going down by 15. Between positive 4 and negative 5, it is going down by 9. Between negative 5 and negative 14, it's going down by 9. And now we compute m as the ratio of the change in y over the change in x.
negative 15 over 5. That reduces down to negative 3. Negative 9 over 3 reduces down to negative 3. And negative 9 over 3 reduces down to negative 3. So these are the same. That means that the slope, m, equals negative 3. And now we just need to choose a point. I guess we could choose this one here. Um, this would be easier to work with. Negative 1 and negative 5. This will be the point that we use. Again, you could have used any point. I almost used negative 4 and 4. It doesn't matter. I could have used any of them. Um, I just try to choose a point that looks easier to work with. So we have the slope and we have a point. So negative 1 comma negative 5. And we label that point x1, y1. Okay, now we hop over here and we write down the point-slope formula. See, if you say it out loud, you know what formula to use. Well, I've got a, a point and I've got a slope, so I better use point-slope. That's y minus y1 open equals, got ahead of myself here. y minus y1 equals m, open parentheses, x minus x1, close parentheses. And now we plug in our x1 and y1 values. So I have y minus negative 5. y minus minus 5 equals negative 3 for m, open parentheses, x minus x1, which is negative 1, so x minus negative 1. Right away I see I can connect these double negatives and make a positive. and distribute this negative 3 through the parentheses. So I have y plus 5 equals negative 3 x minus 3. Subtract 5 on both sides. And I have y equals negative 3x. And negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. So there's your equation. y equals negative 3x minus 8. Now we're going to take this process and... All we have to do is make a table now from example 3. Example 3 says, a baker makes loaves of bread every day. On Monday, he makes 14 loaves. On Wednesday, he makes 38 loaves. And on Thursday, he makes 50 loaves. Write a linear equation modeling the bread making and determine how many loaves of bread the baker had when he started the week. This can be confusing. But think about it this way. When we talk about Monday, we can call that the first day. On the first day, he had 14. Now, Tuesday comes and goes. And now we're on Wednesday. So we're, Tuesday would be the second day of the week. Wednesday would be the third day of the week. So on day three, 
he has 38 loaves. And then Thursday would be the fourth day of the week, so he on day four, he has 50 loaves. So when you make your table, we put days for X and loaves of bread for Y. I'll even label that. This would be days and loaves of bread. All right. So on day one, this guy had 14 loaves. On day three, he had 38. On day four, he had 50. Okay, so the hardest part about, because now you know what to do, but the hardest part about it, these word problems is always knowing what, you know, what's X, what's Y, what's the independent, what's the dependent variable. And then where do I, how do I create the table? That's always the hardest part. That's the part that really can't be memorized because you never know what, what you're going to get. So you just really have to practice it and get kind of a feel for it. And sometimes you're still wrong, you know. But in this case, it seems pretty clear. Now we just compute our change in X and change in Y. This should be familiar territory now. So between 1 and 3, well, that's plus 2. Between 3 and 4, that's plus 1. Between 14 and 38, ugh. so between 20 and 38, that would be 18 plus 6. Is that plus 24? Yeah. Plus 24. Now between 38 and 50, plus 12. Okay. Now we'll compute M as the ratio of the changes in Y over change in X. We want these to be the same. 24 over 12 reduces down, to, or 24 over 2 reduces down to 12. 12 over 1 is 12. So it, these are the same, therefore it's linear, therefore our slope is 12. M equals 12. All right, so M equals 12, now we just need to get a point and this one looks easiest to work with. And we're going to use point 1 comma 14. All right, and that will be x1, y1. I've got some open space over here. I'll use this space. So we're going to write down the point-slope formula because I have a point and a slope. Y minus Y1 equals M, open parentheses, X minus X1, close parentheses. Let's plug in what we know. Y minus Y1, 14 equals M, 12, X minus 1. Now I'll distribute, multiply the 12 through the parenthetical expression. And I have Y minus 14 equals 12X. Minus 12. Now I'll add 14 to both sides. And I get Y equals. 
12x and then negative 12 plus 14 is plus 2. There's our equation. That was one of the things we had to write. Don't forget this second part. How many loaves when he started the week? This is another way of asking you, what is the y-intercept? Okay? Because at time t equals zero, that would be like Sunday night or Monday morning of the week. He had two loaves to start with. So you'd say starting value was tw uh, two loaves. And that's neat because now we're interpreting what the y-intercept really means. Okay, so that's number three. Oh dear, number four, big square root symbol. This is really just another way of writing. Let me rewrite everything here. Remember, I should just a moment. Uh, you could write the square root of a as a to the one half power. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to look at. So we'll write x squared plus 3x to the fourth over x to the eighth. And we will write that in parentheses raised to the one half power. Now, the chief benefit of doing that, so all I've done, by the way, is I've set this thing, this is that same thing, just rewritten. Now I can distribute, multiply this exponent to each of these little exponents here in the parentheses. That's the power rule. So we're going to multiply them. Different than the product rule where we add, we're multiplying. Because we're raising these powers to this power here. So let's rewrite here x to the 2, you know, I'm going to multiply 2 times 1 half. Well, that just reduces to 1, so it's just x. Okay, plus, now 3, I need to multiply to the 1 half power. I almost forgot this. Remember, 3 has an exponent of 1, so we're going to raise that. We're going to multiply that uh, by 1 half. So now I have 3 to the 1 half. And now x to the fourth raised to the one half power would be x to the two because I'm multiplying four times one half. And four over two is two. Over x to the fourth. So eight times one half would be four. Okay, now. 3 to the 1 half power is another way of writing the square root of 3. So let me go back here and just say this equals x plus square root 3 x squared over x to the fourth. And now I can apply the division rule 
uh, of the quotient rule of exponents by dividing out the greatest common factor from the numerator and the denominator. The greatest common factor would be x to the first power. This is x to the first power. So I'm going to divide every single term, every single x, including here, here, and here, by x to the first. So when we do the quotient rule, if I have x to the a over x to the b, that's equal to x to the a minus b. That's the quotient rule. So here, I'm going to divide out x to the first. So x to the first divided by x to the first would be x to the 1 minus 1, which would be x to the 0. And x to the 0 power equals 1. Okay, so this just becomes 1 right here. Let me get another. This is 1 now. Plus... Now I write square root 3, because I'm not messing with that. Now I have x to the second divided by x to the first, so that's x to the 2 minus 1, which is just x, over x to the fourth divided by x to the first is x to the 4 minus 1, which is x cubed. And that's as much as it can be reduced. Okay. Number five asks us, what is the solution to this system of equations? So far, the only method we know to use is the graphing method. And we need to get these both in slope-intercept form before we can proceed. Uh, because they're not in slope-intercept form now. We, we don't know how to plot these lines without converting them. And we don't know any other way to solve the system just yet. There are ways to do this without graphing where you don't have to convert, but we haven't learned them yet, so we just have to convert and graph, see where those lines cross. So first I'll take the first equation, negative 2x. You're going to have to rewrite it negative 2x plus y equals negative 2. You have to rewrite the equation. And now you add 2x to both sides. Remember, we're trying to get y by itself. So y equals 2x minus 2. Okay, we got one of them. And we can actually go ahead and graph that. I've got a y-intercept at negative 2. Then I go up 2 over 1 to the right. Up 1, up 2, over 1. Up 1, up 2, over 1. Like that. Connect the dots. There you go. Now this second one, I have to do the same thing. 2x minus 3y equals negative 6. Subtract 2x from both sides. And I have negative 3y equals negative 2x minus 6. You know, there's a, uh, I'll just do it the old way. So now I'm going to divide through each term by negative 3. <clears throat> These negative 3's cancel, and I have y equals, so negative 2 over 3 is just 2 thirds. two-thirds x, and now six, negative 6 over negative 3 is plus 6 divided by 3 is 2, so plus 2. So that's my second equation. I'll go ahead and graph that in. 
I start at positive 2. Then I do up 2 over 3. Up 2 over 3. Okay, that's where they're going to cross. I can plot another point here. There you go. The coordinates of where they're crossing is 3, 4. There's your solution. Okay. Moving on to number six. It asks us to solve. All right. And what we've got here is a problem where we need to move terms. So I need to add 1 over x to both sides. I have common denominators on the left, so I can just add 6 plus 1, which would be 7 over x. So now I have 7 over x equals 1. Now, what I need to do is to get x by itself, I'm going to do this. I'll multiply both sides by x to get it out of the denominator. And it will end up over here hanging out on the right side. I can cancel the x's here. can't really see that. I'm canceling the x's here. And that leaves behind 7 equals 1 times x, which is just x. Okay, for number 7, I'm asked to solve this equation right here. And the first thing I need to do is isolate the square root by subtracting 12 from both sides. Nineteen minus twelve is seven. So seven equals the square root of sixteen x plus one. The trick here is to square both sides like this. This is a trick. You need to know this trick. It's going to come up a lot. If I square, if I have a square root of x and I square it, that equals x. So it's a way of like getting rid of the square root, is what we say. So I'm squaring both sides. Because what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 7 squared is 49. 49 now equals 16x plus 1. And I can subtract 1 from both sides. Forty nine minus one is forty eight. Forty eight equals sixteen x. Now I can divide both sides by sixteen to get x by itself. Okay. We can reduce uh, forty eight and sixteen by looking at the greatest common factors. Let's see what the factors are. 48 is 6 times 8. 16 is 2 times 8. So I can divide an 8 out of the top and the bottom. And I'll even be able to, to reduce further, but this is a quick way to get started. I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 8. So that would leave behind 6 on top. And it would leave behind 2 on the bottom. 
and that's equal to x. And I see that, ah, that could have reduced further. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 equals x. Okay? I should write that down. Okay. Number eight, factor out the GCF. Here's how that looks. Sometimes I call this reverse distribution. What number can you divide out of each of these terms? The biggest number. The greatest common factor between 30, 48, and 60. Okay, I can't pull out a 30. Can't pull out a 10. Can't pull out a, can I pull out a 12. A 6. Can I pull out a 6 from both? Sure. I can pull out a 6. Because I can divide every term evenly by 6. So I'll end up with a 6 outside. So it's new line. we got 6. Open parentheses. 30 divided by 6 is 5. X squared minus 48 divided by 6 is 8. X plus 60 divided by 6 would be plus 10. Yeah, that's no further reduction possible. So that's it. Number nine, find the equation of a line passing through 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 5. That would be x1, y1, x2, y2. In these problems, we have to calculate the slope using the slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I'll plug in my values. y2 is 5 minus y1 of 3. x2 is 4 minus x1 of 2. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. So I have 2 over 2. And that gives me a slope of 1. So now I've got, I can just choose one of these points as my point, and I'll use 2 comma 3 as my point, and I've got a slope of 1. Okay, so now I use the point slope formula, y minus y1 equals m, open parentheses, x minus x1, close parentheses. So y minus y1 would be y minus 3 equals m, which is 1, open parentheses, x minus x1, x1 is 2. So, you know, we distribute the 1, it doesn't do anything. I have y minus 3 equals x minus 2. Let's add 3 to both sides. I've got y equals x plus 1. Okay. These other problems here, uh, numbers 10 through 15, if I have time to solve these right now, that would take another 30 minutes or so. I think I'll just leave these. Y'all need to do something. Okay. You've got a bunch of examples worked. This is good enough. So it's a 15 question homework assignment. I worked nine of the problems, all right? So you have 
only five problems that are going to be on your shoulders. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful to get you started on the homework. Um, you know, come ask questions in tutorials if you need help. Otherwise, please like this video if you appreciated having well, most of your homework done for you. Uh, and if you have not already, uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're always alerted to new videos. Thanks.